So the Gentle Barn was my dream since I was seven years old. When I was a kid, I lived where there were woods and lakes, and so that was my playground. I was always mucking in the lakes, playing with the frogs, or playing in the woods with the rabbits. And when I was seven years old, I started finding animals that needed help. Maybe baby birds that fell out of their nests, or ducks frozen in the lake, or orphan bunnies. And so I started taking them home when I found them needing help. And my little plan was to have a house full of animals that I saved, and they would be my friends. My parents were not amused at all. <laughs> they did not want a house full of animals. And so they would get rid of the animals. And I would say, how can you do this to me? And they'd say, Ellie, when you grow up, you can have as many animals as you want. So I now have 175 animals. <laughs> and that was the beginning of the Gentle Barn. <laughs> the Gentle Barn was founded in California 16 years ago in 1999. We are now home to 175 animals, including horses, cows, pigs, sheep, goats, chickens, turkeys, peacocks, llamas, dogs, cats, donkeys, parrots, and an emu. We do two things. The first of which is we save animals that no one else wants. So those are the animals that we purposely seek out. And we bring them in and we rehabilitate them with vet care and a whole slew of complementary methods. Once the animals are finally healthy and happy, typically we give them sanctuary for the rest of their lives. And then when they're ready, they help us with our second part of our program, which is the animals help us heal children with the same stories of abuse and neglect. So we work with special needs kids, at risk, inner city kids, as well as adults actually. We work with war veterans, senior centers, domestic violence shelters, really anyone that needs hope, anyone that needs unconditional love and some healing. And they come out and through the interaction with the animals and the stories of the animals and the love and the hope that the animals give them, the people learn kindness, compassion and confidence and really find themselves in the barnyard. For the last several years, it's been our goal to have gentle barns in every state in the country, but we weren't quite ready yet until we met Dudley. <laughs> so we got a call from someone who lived in Tennessee. She called us in California and she said, I know this sounds crazy because I'm in Tennessee and you're in California, but there's a steer here that needs help. And no one locally has the wherewithal to be able to help him. And I just thought, maybe you can do something. So we did some research and found UT nearby that has one of the leading bovine surgeons in the country. And we did more research and found there were several companies that were willing to give a prosthesis for a cow. So we ended up getting a donation to fly to Tennessee, pick up Dudley in Nashville, drive him to the University of Tennessee where he was assessed by the surgeon, Dr. Anderson. We were really nervous that maybe Dr. Anderson would say that he wasn't a good candidate or maybe the damage was too far gone. But much to our delight, he said he was a perfect candidate and we were the perfect organization to be able to sustain him after the prosthesis. Finally, the day arrived where Dr. Anderson said it's time to start thinking about him leaving the hospital. We don't have a large university hospital like University of Tennessee Knoxville near us in Los Angeles. We have wonderful mobile vets, but we don't have a big supportive hospital. And we really thought that for the rest of Dudley's life, it's in his best interest to be near UT Knoxville. We made the decision to keep him here. And at first we thought, well, do we find another organization to take him? Do we board him at a facility? We were able to find this beautiful location for rent. So we were able to start our second location in Tennessee, and we're very, very excited to be here and to have gone national. I was one of the kids that we work with today. Animals really healed me growing up, especially horses. I've always been very connected with horses. Being healed by animals, I know what it's like to come in and need that as a child. The joke around here is I'm the volunteer that never left. I really fell in love with the place. I spent a lot of time uh, getting to know the animals and uh, never had had a, a relationship with anything other than a domestic animal. But I ended up having a, a friendship with a rooster specifically. His name was Mr. Olaf. And every time I came into the gentle barn, this rooster would just come running up to me. And one day he didn't come run up to me. And I went and looked for him and it was unfortunately his last day. And I had this feeling of sorrow and loss that I had never had before for any other animal other than like maybe a human like my grandfather passing away or something like that and I thought to myself wow this animal was just like me and you he was intelligent he knew who I was he missed me when I was gone and I just fell in love with that concept I didn't want to leave the the place because I really wanted to stay connected to that feeling and so you know I ended up joining the board of directors and ended up moving into a, a relationship with Ellie and we ended up having this opportunity to run this place together that was just unbelievable for me.
When people come and visit these animals, the very first thing that we do is tell their stories. And immediately, people identify with them. They identify with feeling lonely, feeling unwanted, feeling scared, feeling unseen. And through identifying with their stories, they also identify with their recovery. Because these animals, who were like them at one point, have learned to trust and love and find joy and embrace their second chance. So the animals turn around and heal people, and it's this incredible circle of healing. Well, my first thought was it was just an animal sanctuary, which is a beautiful thing. I mean, the world needs a lot more animal sanctuaries, especially for farmed animals. But I didn't know that there was so much interaction with uh, troubled youth and troubled adults and, and high needs uh, individuals, which is just the perfect combination. The world needs a lot more of this kind of thing. So the future for the Gentle Barn in Tennessee is to be able to connect enough with the community that every morning we're doing school field trips, every afternoon we're doing special needs at risk in inner city groups. On Saturdays, we have people all over Tennessee as well as neighboring states come and visit the animals. So hopefully more and more people will hear of us, more people will come and meet the animals, hug them and be inspired, and we'll be able to share a little bit of gentleness here in Tennessee.